Today, we are going to study the Word of God under the subject, The Truth of the Tree of Life and Christ An Sang Hong. The world regards Christ An Sang Hong, who came to the earth to bless us as an ordinary man. Just as the Israelites regarded Jesus Christ as a mere son of a carpenter 2,000 years ago. However, we absolutely believe in Christ An Sang Hong as Jesus, who came to the earth a second time, and as God, who saves mankind in the age of the Holy Spirit. Today, through the truth of the tree of life, let us study that the true saviors who have come to the earth are our God the Father, An Sang Hong, and our God the Mother, Heavenly Jerusalem. First of all, we need to understand the composition of the Bible. Hebrews 10 says that the law is a shadow of the good things that are coming. The books of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy are called the Pentateuch. And these books contain the laws of holy God. So, in the past, these books were commonly called the law. Just as Hebrews 10 says, the law contains all the good things that are coming. In other words, shadows can be made only when the good things really exist. So, the Bible says that Jesus explains things hidden since the creation of the world through parables. Let's take a look at Matthew chapter 13, verse 34. Jesus spoke all these things to the crowd in parables. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. So was fulfilled what was spoken through the prophet, I will open my mouth in parables, I will utter things hidden since the creation of the world. There are many things that God hid since the creation of the world. If these hidden things are not revealed, how can we look forward to the kingdom of heaven and salvation? That's why Christ came and explained all the things hidden through parables, secrets, and prophecies, and let us realize them. In Matthew 13, we can see how Christ Jesus explained the truth in detail for us to know. When it comes to the creation of the world, Genesis has the records about it. Then let's find out what God has hidden since the creation of the world. Among God's truths hidden since the creation of the world, we are going to study the will of our holy God from the truth of the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Today, let us study why Christ An Sang Hong came to the earth and preached the gospel of God in the whole world. According to Genesis 2, God put the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the Garden of Eden. The tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil have certain characteristics. As for the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, if man eats of it, he dies. But if he eats from the tree of life, he can live forever. Let's look at Genesis 2, verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, You are free to eat from any tree in the garden. The man was free to eat from any tree in the garden. But there was a tree that has an option. What is the tree? Let us look at verse 17. But you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat of it, you will surely die. Though God gave a strict warning, you will surely die. Adam and Eve were tempted by Satan and disobeyed God's command. If we turn to chapter 3, we can see that they were tempted by Satan and finally they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. 
As they ate it, what happened to them? If they had not eaten from it, they could have lived for thousands of years, ten thousands of years, or billions of years. However, they ate the forbidden fruit and came to die, as God said, When you eat of it, you will surely die. They were forced to live a short and temporary life. If then, for Adam and Eve who sin by eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, is there no more opportunity to have eternal life? Is there no way to restore the way of eternal life? Yes, there is. Let's look at Genesis 3, verse 22. And the Lord God said, The man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. After eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat, and live how long? Live forever. Doesn't it mean that only if they ate from the tree of life they could live forever? Even sinners who ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil could live forever only if they ate from the tree of life. However, what was guarding the way to the tree of life? Let's look at verse 23. So the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. After he drove the man out, he placed on the east side of the Garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. God placed cherubim and a flaming sword to guard the way to the tree of life so that sinners could not approach the tree of life. Like this, in Genesis 3, God showed us the tree of life as a shadow. Today, all people of the world say we became sinners because we inherited the original sin that Adam and Eve committed by eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Although people know that Adam and Eve ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they do not know how to eat from the tree of life. How can we eat from the tree of life? What on earth is the tree of life? Since they had no idea about it at all, if we asked them, Do you know that there is the tree of life in the Garden of Eden? What do they reply? Well, I know that Adam and Eve ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but is there the tree of life too? This is the very important part. All people are moaning in the chains of death. Once people are born, they come to die. The reason is that the original sin of eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is handed down to all human beings as it is. If then, how can we eat from the tree of life? And what is the reality of the tree of life? The Bible says that no word will lack its mate. From now, let's find the mate of the shadow and see how the reality looks. Let's find out what the reality is. As for the tree of life that appeared in the Old Testament, if only we eat of it, we can have eternal life. There is only one way to live for mankind who was destined to die after eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It is to eat from the tree of life. Eating from the tree of life. If anyone lets people know the way to eat from the tree of life, it will be very good and blessed news. By the way, who commanded to block the way? God did. God commanded, block all the way to the tree of life so that sinners can never come to it. So the cherubim who receive the command are keeping the way with a flaming sword. God forbade any sinners from eating from the tree of life. Then, how does the tree of life, which is a shadow, appear as the reality? Let's look at John 6, 53. Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you have no, what? 
You have no life in you. Let's see verse 54. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has what? Has eternal life. He gave us a very important teaching. In the book of Genesis, the Bible said that we can have eternal life when we eat from the tree of life. But here, in John chapter 6, Jesus said, whoever eats his flesh and drinks his blood has eternal life. The Old Testament is a shadow and the New Testament is its reality. In the Garden of Eden, we get eternal life when we eat from the tree of life. In John chapter 6, we get eternal life when we eat Jesus' flesh and blood. Ultimately, we can understand that the flesh and blood of Jesus is the reality of the tree of life in the Garden of Eden. That's why it is said, the law is only a shadow of the good things that are coming. Then, what did Jesus say concerning the tree of life in the Garden of Eden that we can receive eternal life when we eat from it? He said, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. But this is also difficult. So far, we've understood that Jesus' flesh and blood is the reality of the tree of life in the Garden of Eden. But it is difficult to eat Jesus' flesh and drink His blood. In the Bible, let's find the way to eat Jesus' flesh and drink His blood. Let's go to Matthew 26, 17. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? He replied, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time is near. I am going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared what? So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and did what? They prepared the Passover and celebrated it. Let's go to verse 26. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is what? In John chapter 6, Jesus said, Whoever eats the flesh of the Son of Man and drinks his blood has what? Eternal life. And the very way for us to eat Jesus' flesh and drink his blood was hidden in the truth of the Passover. What did Jesus say after blessing the bread on the Passover? He said, this is my body. In other words, this is my flesh. And verse 27, then he took the cup, gave thanks. He took the cup of wine and gave thanks and offered it to them saying, drink from it, all of you. This is whose blood? This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whoever eats the bread of the Passover and drinks the wine of the Passover comes to do what to the flesh of Jesus, the flesh of the Son of Man, and the blood of Jesus, the blood of the Son of Man? He comes to eat and drink them. And when you eat Jesus' flesh and drink His blood, what do you come to have? You have eternal life. That's why God let us be baptized to forgive all our past sins before we keep the Passover and open the way to the tree of life so that we could walk the way. In other words, the fact that we keep the Passover means that we can approach the tree of life by permission of God, doesn't it? When Jesus came to the earth at the first time, His purpose was to give us life. Then did Jesus really come to the earth with the Passover, the truth of the tree of life, when He came for the first time? Let's see John 10, verse 10 together. 
The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that, in other words, the purpose of Jesus coming to the earth is they. Here, they refer to the sheep. God's people, they may have life and have it to the full. Then, in order to give life to mankind, who came to die after eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the Garden of Eden, the tree of life is absolutely needed. Then when Jesus came to the earth for the first time, did he bring the tree of life? When Jesus said, I have come that they may have life, he meant that he came to give life. If he came to give life, what did he have to bring to us in the Garden of Eden? He must bring us the tree of life. Then when the tree of life appears in the truth, what kind of truth is it? When Jesus came to the earth for the first time, did he bring the Passover of the new covenant or not? He told Peter and John to prepare the Passover, didn't he? And also, he conducted the feet washing ceremony. Giving bread, he said, This is my body. And giving wine, he said, This is my blood. When was the day? It was the Passover day. As he granted his flesh and blood to mankind through the Passover, he said, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. But if you eat and drink them, you have eternal life. Whose teaching is this? This is what Jesus himself taught 2,000 years ago. The tree of life was not allowed to sinners in the Garden of Eden. When Jesus came for the first time, however, what did he do to the way to the tree of life in order to give us eternal life through the Passover of the new covenant? He opened the way to the tree of life. Peter, John, other disciples, and all the members of the early church kept the Passover. Would Satan want all mankind to receive salvation? No, Satan never wants. Satan began to destroy this precious truth of the Passover through cunning tricks and stratagems. Around A.D. 155, Polycarp, the representative of the Eastern Church, and Anicetus, the representative of the Western Church, that is, the Pope of the Roman Church, had a controversy over the celebration of the Passover. One party argued that the day of the week was important and insisted on Sunday, and the other said everything must begin from the Passover. But neither Polycarp nor Anicetus persuaded each other and they left the question unsettled. Then they brought this controversy again around AD 197. At that time, Polycrates from the Eastern Church and Bishop Victor from the Western Church began to argue again about this. While they discussed if they needed to keep the Passover or not, they mentioned the date of Easter, and it was the very crafty way to abolish the Passover. There's a saying, look one way and row another. It is to aim apparently at one thing, but really to be seeking something quite different. It is to draw attention to somewhere else so that the important place might be neglected in preparation against attacks. In A.D. 197, there were severe arguments between Polycrates and Victor, but they could not solve anything. Then time passed, and finally, in A.D. 325, the Council of Nicaea was held by Emperor Constantine. Of course, the Roman papacy participated in this religious council. At that time, they instituted Easter to be celebrated on Sunday as they intended. They forcefully insisted that the Passover is a feast celebrated by the Jews and finally abolished the Passover. 
There were many disciples of the apostles who were taught by Jesus. They constantly said, We were taught by the apostles who learned directly from the Lord. We still learn that we must keep Nisan 14, the Passover, and celebrate it. Such letters have been discovered and still remain in the Christian history as records. If the Passover was abolished, it means that the truth that enables us to eat Jesus' flesh and drink Jesus' blood disappeared from the earth, doesn't it? From that time, mankind had the Dark Ages for a long time. The word dark means having no light. During the Dark Ages, there was no truth and no faith in God. If God comes to the earth where there is no truth or faith for a long time, who will be saved? Though God Himself came to the earth and taught the way to have eternal life to mankind who was destined to die because of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the way was blocked and disappeared. What can He do? To save mankind once again, what does He need to do? God needs to come a second time. Because only God can open the way to the tree of life which was tightly closed. And because God commanded the angels to block the way to the tree of life, nobody except God can open the way. Right? That is why the Bible says that God comes to this earth a second time to restore the truth that has been distorted and destroyed. And the reason He brings the truth is to give us life, the life that endures forever. Let us go to Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. Just as man is destined to die once, and after that to face judgment, so Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many people, and He will appear what time? A second time. Not to bear sin, but to bring what? Salvation to those who are waiting for Him. What is the purpose of His coming to this earth a second time? The Bible says that He comes a second time to bring salvation. As He comes to bring salvation to those who are destined to die by eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the Garden of Eden, what should He bring? Only when He allows us to eat from the tree of life, we will be set free from sin, won't we? Unless He brings us the tree of life, we cannot be saved. Which truth realizes the tree of life? The truth of the Passover. Then the Christ who comes to this earth a second time, God in the age of the Holy Spirit, must be the one who brings the Passover of the new covenant. Who is the one who brings the Passover? He is God. Except God, no one can dare to give us life, eternal life. Then, did the Bible prophesy that God would come again to give us eternal life? Let us find out the book of Isaiah 25, verse 6. On this mountain, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine. Which mountain is it here? In the mountain of Zion for all peoples, for all the people in the world. God will prepare a feast of rich food, a banquet of aged wine. What is served at the banquet? It is the aged wine. This is the wine kept for about 1,600 years. A feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats and the finest of wines. This is aged wine because it took 1,600 years 
from A.D. 325 until Father An Sang Hong proclaimed the truth of Passover of the New Covenant to save us. As the Passover of the New Covenant was not kept during that period, the wine is aged wine. A banquet of aged wine. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up what? This is the most important part. What God does with the aged wine is to swallow up death, that is, to give eternal life. The wine that gives us eternal life. When we come up with the wine from the Bible, neither adding nor subtracting any from the words of the Bible, what do we have? Only the wine of the Passover. He will swallow up death forever. The Sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove the disgrace of His people from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day they will say, Surely this is who? Who destroys death with aged wine and gives us eternal life? Surely this is our God. The Bible speaks with emphasis that this is our God. In this age, who has brought the bread and wine of the Passover and blessed us with eternal life through the new covenant? Some may say, Ha! If I proclaim the Passover with bread and wine, would I be God? Let him do that. Before Father An Sang Hong came, had there been anyone who proclaimed the Passover of the New Covenant and blessed us with eternal life through the bread and wine of the Passover? Even if they use the word Passover, it does not always mean the same. The Jews have used the word Passover since long before, but they have never acknowledged Jesus as a Messiah until today. They just regard Jesus as a mere man, a son of a carpenter up to this day. In other words, their Passover is the Passover of the Old Testament. They've inherited the spirit of the Passover of the Old Testament, but they do not have the Passover of the New Covenant. Let's take a look at verse 8. The Sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove the disgrace of His people from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day, they will say, Surely this is our God. Since the Bible tells us that the one who has this sign is God coming a second time, how can we reject the teachings of the Bible? Anyone who does not acknowledge God, who has come with the sign, is no less a person than a Jew who crucified Jesus. In that day they will say, Surely this is our God. We trusted in Him, and He does what? He saved us. God comes a second time to bring us salvation. If there is a person who brings aged wine and blesses us with eternal life, who is he? Surely this is our God. We trusted in him, and he does what? He saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. The Bible tells us so clear on this, Christ, An Sang Hong, came to this earth and allowed His children in the age of the Holy Spirit to meet our Heavenly Mother whom we once lost. And He taught every truth about the Spirit and the Bride. How can we deny all those teachings? What do we reach when we follow all the teachings of Father? Salvation. In order to lead us to salvation, Father gave us all the teachings, such as Abraham's family and mother, Jerusalem mother, and mother, the source of the water of life. All the truths have come from Father. Two thousand years ago, the Jews did not recognize Jesus who came to this earth as the Messiah 
but rebuked him. How can you, a mere man, claim to be God and try to stone him? It is the same now. People do not believe in God An Sang Hong, but rather denounce him just because he came to this earth in the flesh. As the appointed time of God has come, however, people of the world are now coming before God. It seems that they have started to sense the light of God. Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother, now they are being preached throughout the world to Samaria and to the ends of the world. Whenever we preach the gospel with conviction, God opens the eyes of those who see the Bible, ears of those who listen, and hearts of them to realize the truth. When the Apostle Paul preached to the women who had gathered at the river on the Sabbath, one of those who were listening to Paul, Lydia, opened her mind. The Bible says that God opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. She accepted the gospel and started to believe in God from that day. In this age too, when we boldly preach Christ An Sang Hong, God in the age of the Holy Spirit, all the power of darkness recedes. If you just hold a lantern and hesitate to turn it on in pitch black darkness, the battery will all be discharged. We must not put it aside for a long time, we must use it when we can use it. In the gospel work, all the grace of the Holy Spirit which God gave to us, will be discharged like batteries if we do not use it. But when we use it, it will be recharged again and again so that we can shine a far more brilliant light. So, let us preach harder. Let us shout to the world, Our Father An Sang Hong is God. Heavenly Mother has come to this earth. Let us preach hard, Father and Mother. Then in the kingdom of heaven, our Father and Mother will crown us with eternal life that never withers. I hope that you will receive much grace through this sermon. Thank you very much.